Hey everyone, I'm Amanda with Sweet Pieces and welcome to my bathroom. <laughs> I'm in my guest bathroom today and I'm going to share with you guys some easy ways to wax your chalk type furniture with um, Jolie Finishing Wax. So before I get started, I'm going to wait a few minutes because I know that, um, you know, it takes people a couple minutes to kind of jump on here sometimes. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes to, to get all the dings and the alerts. How's everybody feeling today? Hopefully uh, today's a little bit better outside. The weather's a little bit nicer. So that always determines, you know, how I feel, the, however the weather is outside. How many of you guys are like that? That it, you know, you, you kind of, your mood is determined by the weather. It's kind of a crazy thing, but all right. All right, so we got a couple people joining in here. So excited to come to you guys today. It's Friday, but like who even knows what day of the week it is anymore? <laughs> it's so crazy. It just feels like, um, I keep saying it's Groundhog Day. Like it just, it's just the same day over and over. <laughs> Although I feel really lucky because I get to share every day with you guys and do something fun and new and exciting in my house. So thank you for tuning in so that I have the uh, opportunity to do this. Um, so today we are going to be waxing. I'm going to teach you guys how to wax. Um, when I first started using these amazing products and when we first opened Sweet Pieces, um, waxing was one of the things that we got the most questions on. So um, we about a year ago, we switched over to Jolie Paint um, and it's an amazing product, but really fantastic is the wax. So super duper easy to use very very easy um it goes on like butter and it's it's no we no longer get very many questions on it because it is so super easy to use um so we're in my bathroom today welcome to my bathroom we're getting up close and personal here <laughs> um so this i did a house tour i think it was let me lower this a little bit um i did a house tour a couple weeks ago, maybe last week or the week before. I can't remember because it feels like Groundhog Day. <laughs> um, and I told you that one of the things in my house that we did was this really cute little guest bathroom and I never waxed this vanity. So I'm going to tell you the tale of this vanity. This vanity, okay, so this bathroom is super small. It's kind of hard to see. Well, it's not really that hard to see it, but you can kind of see like I'm sitting here and like it's this big. So this was a really tight space and like that, there's your, there's my doorway. So, and then there's the toilet and the wall. So it's super, super small bathroom. This is the bathroom that my daughter takes her baths in. And we, I needed it to, you know, function because I have to sit here while she's taking the bath. My tripod is in the bathtub. So I needed as much space here as I could get. And this was the only vanity that I could find that had this depth to it. So I think this is like, I don't know, like 12 inches deep or something. But it was this horrid cherry color. And it was a super cheap vanity from Home Depot. I think it was like, I don't know, $200 or something. So I brought it home. And of course, I knew I was going to just paint it and, and have it match. So I painted it in pure white. And then I did a French gray wash on top of it, which um, if you want to know how to do that technique, then you could just jump onto YouTube and watch our video on wash technique. And uh, I left it. I left it um, on wax because, you know, I like I had a baby and things were crazy. So anyway, two, two and a half years later, fast forward, and here we are with the vanity. It's in great condition. Um, there were a couple scuffs on it. They were a little hard to get off, but I managed... Um, and now today I'm going to wax it. So let me just share with you the process when I painted this. So the first thing I did was I, I cleaned it with the credit card or with the pre-paint cleaner. And then I started painting it and something crazy happened. The paint would not stick. So this was a really cheap vanity from Home Depot, um, probably made in China, not real wood. And the paint really resisted it. So I'm going to show you the inside of my cabinet, which I've never shown anybody before. Um, <laughs> all of Madison's bath toys are in here and there's, there's one area in here that you can still see this. So let me, let me lower this down so you guys can see. Let's see. Are you going to be able to see it in there? Take it out of here. Okay. okay. 
So see that right there? That is uh, part of the wood that I just never finished painting because who cares? It's on the inside. Um, and that is basically what the paint looked like when I painted it on the entire vanity. So if this happens to you, this is what you're going to do. You are going to, um, you're going to seal it with uh, shellac. You're going to, sorry guys. Um, you're going to seal it with shellac. You're going to give it a quick light sand and then you could just get on with your painting. So that, um, we call that like spider webbing in um, the furniture world. So if you happen to have that happen to you, just know that there is a cure. So I did that on, on the entire surface. I sealed it with shellac. First, I lightly sanded it and then I sealed it with shellac and then everything obviously was a-okay. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you're doing really cheap furniture um, that's not real wood, most of the time we're seeing it, it's like stuff that's coming out of China. Um, it has like some sort of a, a coating on it before it leaves the factories and that is resisting the paint. So if you happen to have that happen, no fear, you just use a little shellac, a little bit of sanding and you're good to go. So after you get done painting your piece and you love the way it looks and you're ready to seal it, that's when you're going to go ahead and use your wax. And once again, I forgot, I forgot something, something to open this. Let me go grab a key. <laughs> So if you're afraid of waxing, by the way, I'd love to know where you guys are tuning in from today. Who wants to give me a quick shout out and tell me where they're visiting from? Um, I would love to hear. Okay, so what you're going to use is your clear wax, and then you're also going to need some sort of a wax brush. So we carry a couple different types of the Jolie uh, wax brushes. We carry the pointed and the large. And I, I use both of them. New Jersey. Hi, Lorraine. How you doing? Um, you can also use um, the Jolie paintbrushes. So I really like to have my wax brushes and my paintbrushes separate. But if you just want to invest in one brush, then you can certainly use the signature brush. Kings Park. That's close. <laughs> Um, you can use either the small or the large signature brush as well. You just want to make sure that when, if you use your wax, if you use your paintbrush for waxing, that you clean it really, really well before you go back to painting. So what, how you'll do that is um, using a, a really good degreasing mild soap. And we recommend we have a cleaning condition soap bar that's actually made in house. And so that's what we recommend, but you just want to use something that's mild. So you certainly don't want to use a Northport, the couch, Huntington. I love it. I love it. Um, you don't want to use something that's really harsh. So people will say, can I use Dawn soap on it to clean it? No, don't use Dawn. Pretend like you washed your hair every day with Dawn. What would it look like? So you'd be a hot mess. And we might have to start doing that these days. <laughs> um, so don't use anything that's too harsh because these are natural bristle brushes and we want to maintain the natural oils in the bristles. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush into my wax. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bit on my brush. I'll show you my brush. Okay, so there's not a whole ton on there. Okay, but a little bit. And then I'm going to take my favorite blue shop towels. Oh, Rug Konkuma. But you're visiting from Virginia. Very nice. Um, my favorite blue shop towels. I'm going to fold this into quarters. Love shop towels. They're really great for everything from um, doing a color wash to um, buffing out your wax. It's, they are durable, they're lint-free, they, they hold up to a lot of uh, wear and tear and abuse. So I have my, my shot towel, I have my brush, I put a little bit of wax on my brush, and now I'm just gonna start waxing. And I'm basically, what I always tell people, is you wanna think of this like you're moisturizing the piece. You wanna think of this like you're applying moisturizer. So when typically when you're doing top coat, you're brushing it on. Um, 
but we, this is, it, you are brushing this on, but top coating, we kind of equate that to nail polish, to putting on nail polish, whereas waxing is like applying moisturizer. So you really just want to think of this like you're applying moisturizer to this whole piece. It doesn't matter what direction you go in. You can actually go in all different directions, move it all around. I see someone's asking, where can you buy shop towels? Uh, you can buy shop towels at probably pretty much any hardware store. You can also buy them at Sweet Pieces. So right now we're currently shipping all of our products, all of our DIY products, and also many of our home decor items right from our website at sweetpieces.com. Um, but you can also um, curbside pickup. So if you want to swing by the store, we're there Tuesdays through Saturdays from 11 to 5. You can um, either call in your order or you can go right on the website and choose curbside pickup. We'll have your order ready within, I don't know, an hour or so, and you can come and pick it up. So everything you need. I've always strived when I created the company, I strive to be a one-stop shop for all things DIY because I remember when I would be doing my own projects, I would be going all over the place. I'd go, be going to all kinds of different stores to get all these supplies and um, I just felt like it was such a hassle. So we've always strived to be a one-stop shop at Sweet Pieces for all things DIY. Okay, so I'm kind of excessively um, brushing this, but I just want to make sure I, I get it good. So when I, we, we used to sell um, a different type of wax and that wax was a little bit of a different application. So we would tell you that you would want to do just a small area and then immediately wipe it back. However, our rules have changed, okay? So you're gonna brush it on and you can actually leave it. So I'm gonna continue on to the next door. Okay, actually I'll do this. So I'm gonna brush. I get, and I really love this pointed brush because it gets into, you know, like little grooves and crevices. Okay, and I see that looks like spaghetti sauce. Madison must have been washing her hands in here. Okay, so I'm just brushing, 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 getting that wax all around. And if you touch it, you can kind of feel. You can feel that it's like a little bit sticky, a little bit tacky, and that's that's normal before you buff. But after you buff, it shouldn't feel like that anymore. So I'm just brushing, 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 brushing. Okay. Um, so, you know, I was, I was just saying, I'm, I'm always referring to waxing like applying moisturizer. So when you're applying moisturizer, you don't care about what direction you're going in. You're just kind of rubbing it in all over the place. It's not, you don't have to worry about, well, what if I go over the same area twice? Is it going to look different? No, it's not going to. So you can kind of just, you just want to get it spread out onto the piece. Make sure that you're covering everything. And sometimes the clear on these lighter colors is a little bit hard to actually see where you're getting the wax. But um, if you, once you're done buffing it and you just kind of rub your hand over it, you'll be able to feel it. So you could always go back over it if you feel like you missed a spot. Okay. So I'm going to just go over this door here, over my little columns. This is easy peasy. By the way, this wax is um, non-hazardous and also no odor. So you don't have to worry about um, any kind of smell in the house. Um, it's also non-hazardous, so, um, you know, it's totally safe for um, your pieces of furniture, also for the kids. Let's see, do we have a question? Can you apply the wax with a rag instead of a brush? What a great question, Eileen. Um, so you can, you can absolutely apply the wax with a rag. I, however, prefer to use a brush 
especially on surfaces like this that have all of this detail work. So in order for me to get in there with a brush, I just find that it's a little bit harder. I also find that the brush, it spreads it really nicely. It spreads the, br the bristles help to really spread that wax out. Um, the other thing about using a rag, wax is going to absorb into the thing of least resistance. So if you're using a rag, a lot of your wax is gonna absorb into the rag and not necessarily go onto the, the piece of furniture. Whereas with a brush, it can't absorb into the bristles, so it has to absorb onto the piece. So you're wasting less product when you're using a brush, which I like to not waste things. I'm sure you do too. <laughs> so people always ask, oh, well, how often do I need to re-wax my piece of furniture? So the answer is, it really depends on your usage. Um, Something that is very highly used, uh, you know, think about kitchen cabinets or your dining table, <clears throat> um, the tops of your nightstands, things like that, you might have to wax more often than, um, you know, like let's say a china cabinet or a side table in a bedroom, things like, uh, um, in, a, in like a guest room that aren't used very often. So it kind of just depends. And sometimes you don't really need to wax ever again at all. So it totally depends on the piece and it depends on you, like what you want. So when do you know that you have to re-wax a piece? So here's a couple of rules of thumb. You, if you feel like your pieces are looking dull and you need to bring back a little bit of shine, the first thing you're gonna do is just get a rag and buff your piece out. And usually that will help bring back the shine. If that doesn't work, then you basically use your wax just like a cleaner. Anytime you're applying a subsequent coat of wax after your first coat, it's, the wax is gonna be applied much easier. So it's not, it's not really absorbing into very much, it's just it's kind of going over that top coat of the wax. So if I were to do another coat on this, it would, it would very easily take it. Although this first coat really wasn't hard to apply at all. I always tell people, if you are working harder to wax than you did to paint, you're doing something wrong. Um, so you, you see how hard I, I worked very hard here. <laughs> um, you know, you're just brushing it on, spreading it out. It's like buttering bread. You're just, it's really not that hard. You just want to get it evenly coated basically so once you get your now i don't remember if i went over this i didn't so i could tell because it doesn't feel waxy on the bottom here so i'm just going to put a little bit of wax on here get this all spread out and then once you're done you can take you're going to take your rag whatever it is that you're using so we actually sell two types of rags we sell a reusable waxing rag that you can wash and clean. Um, and then we also sell the roll of shop towels, which I absolutely love. And these are, you know, they're throwaway. Um, so, you know, it's really, we, I like to always give people choices to at least have two choices. Um, we just, those are just the two that we've tried and that we really like. You know, that's the other thing about the Sweet Pieces product line. I have literally tested every single product that we carry in the store so um it's not just like i'm ordering it and throwing it on the shelf i'm actually trying it or my team members are trying it um and we're approving it we're saying this gets the sweet piece of stamp of approval so now i'm just taking my rag and i'm just kind of rubbing over these areas and i can feel as i'm rubbing my rag that it's a little bit sticky and tacky but as I rub it, it becomes smoother and softer. So that's kind of, that's what you're looking for, basically. You're looking for it to become smoother and um, not grabbing onto the rag. So let's see, if I have a small piece of furniture, would I recommend the whole, waxing the whole piece before uh, wiping it back? What a great question, Pam. So before, I may have told you, you need to wax in small sections. But now with this new product, you don't have to do that. So you can absolutely wax the whole piece of furniture just like I did and then go back and wipe it back. So with this product, 
The longer that you wait to buff it, the higher of a shine that you'll be able to achieve. So I'm just, I'm basically just polishing this now at this point. I'm just rubbing it back, making sure that every area feels nice and smooth. And what this does, what the whole waxing process does, is it gives the piece protection and it also gives it a little bit of shine. So if you feel like your chalky, your um, pieces that have been painted with chalk type paint are a little bit dull, this is the way to shine them up a bit. My poor dog wants to come inside. Just give me one second, I'm gonna have to run and just go grab him. <laughs> Good thing I have that door by my, by my bedroom. Um, Ralph wants to know what we clean them with. Give me one second. This is like, this is real time. <laughs> um, so Ralph, what do we clean our wax brushes with? So we, I, I was just mentioning, we like to use a nice mild soap that's gonna maintain the natural oils in the bristles of the brush. And we have one at Sweet Pieces. It's actually made in house by an amazing soap artist. Um, it's called the Clean and Condition Brush. We actually developed it ourselves. It has um, lavender and lemon oil fragrance, which is beautiful. And it cleans the brushes really, really nicely. It gets everything out, all of the, the yucky you know, wax and also paint out of the brush. So Denise has a question. She painted a dress a couple of years ago and it occasionally gets scuff marks. She used the Annie Sloan wax. Should I try the Jolie wax instead? So you certainly can. You can absolutely put the Jolie wax over um, Annie Sloan wax. I will tell you that I definitely prefer the new wax. Um, it's a lot easier to apply. It also, in my opinion, is more durable. Um, it's it's I don't it's just it's really <laughs> it's just better. It works a lot better. It goes on a lot easier. Um, it's a really, really fantastic product. So I would definitely recommend it and you can absolutely do that. And always, you know, applying another coat of wax, like I said, it's just gonna shine it up and just give it like a new life. So it's definitely a good idea to do that. All right. So what I'm gonna do, cause you know, I'm talking and I'm not really sure what did I wipe, what didn't I wipe. I'm just gonna take my hand and just kind of go around. Okay, so that still feels sticky tacky. So I'm gonna wipe this back. And I'm sure it's hard to tell on camera, but I can definitely see when I look at this on an angle that this has got a nice shine to it now, whereas before it was very um, dull and chalky looking. So I'm just gonna keep rubbing until I feel like the wax is nice and absorbed. Feels pretty good. And then basically, that's it, I'm done. I, you know, there's really nothing else to do. You're just buffing off the wax. Um, if you were doing, let's say like kitchen cabinets, I would always recommend doing at least a second coat and we do recommend waiting 24 hours in between coats of, of wax to give you the most durable finish. Um, you know, other things that aren't really gonna get a lot of wear and tear, um, you could do one coat on. A lot of times, like on the top of a dresser, we'll do two coats just to give it a little bit more durability. And we will wait that 24 hours in between for dry time, just to give it more, like a chance to kind of dry up and cure. So let's talk about like dry time and curing. How does this whole process work? So the wax is pretty much dry within 24 hours, but then it's gonna continue to cure and harden over the next say five to 21 days or so. So during that first 30 days of use, you wanna be somewhat careful with your pieces. So I tell people, you know, don't have Thanksgiving dinner on the first 30 days of use. Don't 
write a thesis on your desk during the first 30 days of use. Don't cook chicken cutlets and spaghetti sauce with, with your kitchen cabinets during the first 30 days of use. So you just want to kind of be gentle with them. You can all, you can absolutely, like, let's say you do a dresser in your bedroom and you want to put a couple picture frames and some lamps. You can absolutely do that. But, you know, moving things around on the piece, that wax is still kind of soft. So you want to just give it a little bit of time to kind of cure up and harden. So each day that passes, your wax is going to get harder and harder. And here's the other thing. Let's say during that first 30 days of use or any time after you have waxed your piece, you find that you have a scuff or a scratch or a mark or, you know, whatever, something is wrong with it, then you can just use the wax basically as a cleaner. So you would just get your wax out, you know, get out your can, get out a little brush, buff out the little spot that you need to fix and then just wipe it back. So any kind of scuffs or marks that you get in your wax, they're in your wax, they're not in your paint. So wax basically reactivates itself. So you can just use the wax and, and buff out any spots that you have on there that need to be fixed up basically. Um, and then worst case scenario is you could just throw another coat of paint over it and then go ahead and re-wax it if you, if you really got it marked up and dirty. You know, the kids, well, you know, even crayon. Like, my daughter drew on my island. I showed you guys that last week with crayon. You can absolutely just go on and um, you know, use your wax, basically, as a cleaner. Let's see. Joy has a question. My daughter has bath cabinets that have an oil-based paint on them. Should she put shellac on first? sand apply chalk paint then wax so joy i don't think that it's necessary to put shellac on first i think you would be completely fine to just use the crud cutter pre-paint cleaner go ahead and if you want to give it a light sand you can um i don't think it's necessary and then you could just go ahead and use um the jolie matte finish paint and then go ahead and use your wax and you'll have a brand new cabinet which is fantastic um, okay, so what else, let's see, what else do I want to tell you guys? So the, I know the other day when we were doing house tour, I had a couple questions about paint colors in my house. Um, so I just wanted to give you an FYI. So this paint color in here is a pretty gray. I matched it to, um, the tile in the floor and it is called, uh, it's Pebble Beach. It's a Benjamin Moore color. Um, I used the Bath and Spa, the Aura. It went on beautifully. It's not, um, it, it's also like a nice matte finish. So I didn't want it like shiny, um, but it's still like wipeable and scrubbable. And it's held up really, really beautifully to the humidity. And my two and a half year old splashing daughter who now likes to swim in the bathtub. But also she loves to keep the shower, the rainfall shower head on. And I have no shower doors here. So I get a lot of splatter all over this bathroom, including on this cabinet, um, which is, I don't know, 24 inches away from the bathtub. And like I said, this hadn't been waxed and it's held up really, really beautifully. So I can feel really confident recommending to you guys to do pieces in your home because I have a ton of pieces in my house that have been done that are all holding up really, really beautifully. So definitely... Um, if you're thinking about painting a piece, jump in and do it. It's super easy. It's fast results and it's significant results. Like we live in an instant gratification society, right? So we love to see like results right away. And that was one of my biggest issues when, before I found all of these amazing, amazing products was I was having to sand, I was having to strip, I was having to prime. And by the time I got to that point, I was done with the project. I was, I was bored of it. So with this new process and these new products that we now carry, it makes it really easy to finish a project in an afternoon and be satisfied, instantly gratified. So yesterday I did those uh, little mannequins with you guys, um, the gold ones that we did the foil on. And after I got off camera, I spent another 10, 15 minutes just touching everything up. They were done. They were done in a half an hour and they're back in their place and they look beautiful and perfect. And it's just very, very easy to get projects done, which is what we absolutely love at Sweet Pieces. Um, so going back to my wall paint, I just wanna let you guys know, just in case you didn't know, 
ABOS is open right now. So if you are itching to do a home project and you need some paint, some wall paint, um, definitely call your local ABOS. They are doing curbside pickup, so you can pick it up right there. We're also doing um, virtual consultations for both your furniture projects as well as your window treatment and wallpaper projects. So anything that you guys need help with, we are here for you. Just give us a call at Sweet Pieces and we will help guide you through the process. We'll, we're even going to throw in the comments the link to the virtual consultation um, so that we can, we can help you with your furniture projects. Um, what else did I want to tell you guys today? Uh, oh, this is what I want to talk to you about. So this is another really fun thing that we have at the shop. This is a Jolie paint color mixing guide. So if you have visited our store, you've seen our famous um, binder full of all the custom colors that we've made. So Jolie has made this even easier for us and has created this beautiful paint chart. And these are all mixes of the different colors. So uh, we up top there we have graphite and French blue, um, one to one ratio. So this, this whole chart has all different mixtures. So we can't actually mix these for you in the store, but we can um, tell you what combinations to mix. So Regina has a question, it's an important question. When are we launching the new DIY kits, the new DIY boards? So exciting news, people. It's going up today on the website we received all of our supplies, so I had mentioned the other day, the reason why we didn't launch it was because we sold so many of the other kits that we did that we ran out of some of our supplies. So we ordered new supplies and we got everything in yesterday, so we'll be launching those kits today. So you can order them um, for this weekend if you want to. So stay tuned. We'll probably be launching them in like an hour or two up on the website. Okay, so Denise wants to see um the shower tile she saw a glimpse of the shower during our house tour thank you so much denise so yeah i'd be happy to show it to you and i actually have a question for you guys so the ow <laughs> so uh, we actually the bathtub that we have we this was it's original to the house the house was built in 1929 and it's an old cast iron tub and it's big and i loved it and i wanted to have it redone so i didn't know anybody that could do it and i i called some random person that i found on um yelp and they did a terrible job it's, it's very upsetting so i'm wondering if you guys know of anybody that can help me with this so here's my tile and by the way, this was designed by the one and only Aunt Nancy, who is no longer with us. She was the tile queen of New Jersey. Um, we lost her a few months ago. Very, 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 very upsetting. Uh, but I know she's with me in spirit. And so here's my tile. And this is, it's a marble. It's a marble tile. And Aunt Nancy designed this little inset here so this is actually a basket weave marble which is the same that's on my floor but what we did was we put it on a diagonal and i have to tell you my tile installer really loved me for that <laughs> he really loved me for that um so that's something that you can do. If you take your tile and you just turn it on a diagonal, it can kind of completely change the look. So then we also did what she really loved me for is we took, this is not an inlay. This is actually, you know, this wasn't like one tile. This is actually, the, those little squares are cut into each one of those diamond tiles. So lots of love went into this. And the gentleman who did this for me, his name is Anthony Maselli. When I tell you, he's probably one of the most um, amazing tile installers I've ever met. I mean, look at how like each one of those tiny little tiles had to be cut. And he did a really, really, really fantastic job. So here's another um, fun tip. This was something that we did. So I don't know if you can see it on camera, but these um, marble pencils are actually shiny whereas the rest of my tile is honed. So in person, it just kind of gives this like little touch of pop. 
it's just a fun little design detail. So we did the subway, the marble subway, and then we have the diamonds, and then we have um, the basket weave on a diagonal. And then here's my tub that is peeling. This is terrible. So if you guys know of anybody who does this, um, please tell me, send me, send me an email because this is peeling and it needs to be redone. Very, very upsetting. Um, but you know, there's crazier things in this world. So anyway, hopefully Denise, that was helpful for you. Um, if you need uh, design help, we can also help you with that. We do all kinds of design work, um, everything from <sighs> accessorizing, um, room layouts, furniture placement, um, all that good stuff. So we can help you with colors, picking out colors, pretty much everything, designing window treatments, wallpaper, um, all that all that good stuff that, that really brings a house together and makes it a home. So uh, thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Let me make sure I don't have any other questions. Nope, I don't see anything. Okay, all right, great. Um, so thank you so much for, oh, the windows, yes. So let me just show you really quick. This is, these two, this one and this guy here are actually old china cabinet doors and I took them off. Let me flip this around. I took them off and I turned them into medicine cabinets. So I had them built into my wall and I actually sprayed them with um, mirror effects, which is another product that we carry that basically turns glass into mercury glass. So you can find that up on the website. Just look for mirror effects. And I love this. They came out so fun. And let me see if you, okay. So can you see how it kind of looks like distressed? Like it's a, looks like mercury glass, vintage mercury glass. And I did the same technique on the um, doors that I did on the vanity. So we did the pure white with the gray wash on here as well. Ooh, bathtub doctor. Thank you, Dion. I am definitely going to be giving him a call. And then here is a window treatment. So take a peek at this. This is fun. So this was actually a sheer panel that I had. And I loved the pattern on it so much. And I loved the, the fabric. I just thought it was so pretty. And I want, I didn't need a panel there. I wanted to have a Roman shade. So um, my very talented friend, Elisa, the drapery lady, who does window treatments, um, she made the shade for me. And now it's, you know, so it was turned from a panel into a Roman shade, which you can absolutely do if your space is small enough, um, which this particular window was the perfect size to do something like that. If it was a big window, I wouldn't be able to do that. I would need bigger pieces of fabric. So um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Happy Friday. I hope you guys have a really great weekend. It's good Friday. It's the best Friday. So it's, it's, it's an exciting weekend with Easter coming up. So I hope you guys all have a really, really beautiful weekend. I want to just remind you to stay positive. It's so important. Um, turn the news off. Stop watching the news. We will find out what we need to know, but we're all just supposed to be staying home and staying safe, staying, you know, hanging tight with family. So keep that in mind. We are available, like I said, for curbside pickup. It's totally not no contact. So you get in your car, you drive to our shop, you step out, you grab your bag and you go. So we're, there's no contact. Um, we're sanitizing everything as we're bagging it and, and packaging it. So you can feel really, really safe. Um, knowing that we're doing the right thing and we hope that we are giving you guys an outlet a creative outlet to transform your space and also you know have something fun to do so we also have um, the kits available the DIY kits for the signs so we, we'll, we'll be launching the second kit today but that first kit with the smaller signs that we launched we do have kits available so it's a great little Easter gift um, an Easter activity to do with the kids we also have those really cute jelly bags that you could use as an Easter basket. So if you can't, you know, if you can't get to the store or you don't want to go out, you could just order right from the website. We'll pack it up for you. You can come and pick it up. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And I hope you have a really, really beautiful, blessed weekend. I'll see you guys soon.
Thanks for watching. Want to learn more? Subscribe now.